Hello, cooking enthusiasts. This week's video is very exciting because I get to show off my brand new pasta machine. This is from a company called Arcobolino, and they make super legitimate pasta equipment, including extruders like this. Right now, what you are seeing is their smallest machine, but it is still super well built and uses real deal brass dies. If you see my viewership numbers, you'll know this absolutely isn't a sponsorship or a brand deal or anything, but I was in touch with the company, and they were super kind and actually sent me this machine. And since this is a type of machine I've wanted for years, I will certainly be gushing about it quite often. In the future, when I use this machine with a video, I will switch back to the headset camera. I thought this external view would be better, but it isn't. What you would be seeing is semolina inside the machine being slowly mixed with water. We wanted to get a fresh bag of semolina, but all they had was extra coarse the extra coarse semolina did still work, but I think it did give us a few issues down the road, but that is all part of the learning curve. We also probably slightly underhydrated the dough. The machine is designed to work with a very low moisture dough, but a little bit of our measured water spilled. Again, the pasta did still come out, but I believe it gave us some additional fragility once the pasta was a little air-dried. The current pasta shape being extruded right now is called Bigly, and you could also probably refer to it as Spigatoni. It's basically this extra thick spaghetti, which is one of my personal favorite shapes. We didn't try all of them in this first batch, but currently I have four pasta shaping. There's the bigly, and we switched halfway to a large rigatoni, which was pretty fun to work with, and not yet shown are radiatory and clamshells. The large rigatoni is nice because we can make pretty different functioning shapes by cutting it to different lengths. We started with a pretty normal length for rigatoni. We did a few of them that were extra long, and we planned on stuffing those. And we also did really short rigatoni, which is called a calamari shape. The calamari shape was the trickiest to do, because the pasta is coming out of the machine pretty fast. Ultimately, though, these rigatoni shapes did end up cracking very often, which again, I think is due to the hydration and the semolina issues I mentioned earlier. Even though they did tend to kind of break in half on this first attempt, the actual texture, once the pasta was cooked, was perfect. I know this is not super exciting 
for some people, especially because most people can't easily get this type of machine. But whenever I use this machine for a video, I will always try to include an actual pasta dish that you could do. Today's pasta dish starts with a little bit of thinly sliced prosciutto. I am lucky enough to be working with my grandmother's prosciutto, but of course you could use store-bought prosciutto. You could also use a pancetta or a bacon. We are just frying it up in a little bit of a neutral oil to render a little bit of the prosciutto fat and make it crispy. Eventually, this crispy prosciutto will be just a topping on the dish. After the prosciutto was crispy, we added some already blanched broccolini and rapini. Rapini is a vegetable closely related to broccoli, but it has a slightly different texture. It's also significantly more bitter. Personally, though, I don't mind the bitter taste, but I do like the combination of both vegetables. We did a relatively high temperature saute of these vegetables. We actually thought about busting out the wok burner and doing it that way, but maybe sometime in the future. If you wanted to make a dish like this and even had just a normal stovetop wok, I think it would work well. Once we got a little bit of color on the green vegetables, we also added some sliced garlic and turned the temperature of the stove down a little bit. By the time we were happy with the frying vegetables, the pasta water wasn't quite ready yet, so we add just a splash of water to the pan to halt the cooking and turn the temperature right down. After that, it was just waiting a few minutes for the pasta water to come to a boil, and then we added the super short rigatoni slash calamari shapes. Even though we had just made this pasta, it still took a decent few minutes to cook because the dough is so low hydration to start with. But in mind, this is actually a major benefit because something like a fresh egg pasta is so easy to overcook. As mentioned previously, we did have some breakage issues, but it was still really delicious. Once the pasta was done, it got added to the frying pan with some extra pasta water. I really prefer cooking with a neutral oil, and now at a lower temperature, we are adding some good olive oil. We also added a little bit of black truffle honey that I was actually able to make last December with local truffles. Obviously, if you wanted to make a dish similar to this, you could use regular honey. But just a little bit of sweetness really works well with the bitter rapini. Sautéing some additional wild mushrooms would also work very well. But that is really the extent of the dish. On the plate, it was finished with a little extra olive oil, of course, as well as some balsamic vinegar. This is a real Italian 
balsamico, but it is relatively young, so it's quite sour and not as intense as more aged vinegars. I find for certain dishes, I prefer the younger balsamics. And of course, topped with the crispy pieces of prosciutto. Now, I have to say, even ignoring the excitement of the homemade pasta, this is one of the best pasta dishes I've ever made. It was really well balanced. If you have any questions about making the pasta or the pasta dish, please let me know in the comments. Please consider sharing and subscribing and all that stuff. But otherwise, thank you for watching.